to speak. This is the third event I have. I, I'm speaking in Delhi, so some of you, some of you have have watched one or two speeches before. The difference I'll try to make today is the other two times I was extremely negative. So today I'll be positive because a lot of developments in our team have taken place and we have been able to recover assets. So today I bring good news. Before I start my presentation, I picked up four examples of things that the colleagues on the panel spoke about and that we face as well. So I wanted to share with them. One is the access to the roof of the client. Some people think it's a trivial thing. We have a client that requires us to go for a five-day training course at the client's premises before you can even step on the rooftop. So you can imagine you have to bring all the O&M contractors and your own guys. And if you lose that contractor, you have to retrain people because there is a list of the personnel that can gain access to the roof. So that point we know quite well. Second point was about having one engineer managing multiple sites. Uh, I believe M Plus was talking about that. That's the same model we implement because we have more than 50 sites in India cannot have 50 guys. So we have a few guys and each guy manages a certain number of systems until you can tell that the, the engineer is overloaded. If you see the guys working Saturdays and Sundays, because people forget that the sun shines every day. Yeah? So O&M teams, and I'm sure you can correlate. It's very common that it's a Saturday, I'm with my family and my phone rings because whatever issue has happened to a certain system. And the bigger the system, the more the panic, right? Because of the losses. The third uh, item I picked up is on like basically revenue uh, disappearance from DIM generation. Some of our clients, they're very big multinational companies. So you can imagine they look at us as the midgets. You're a dwarf, you're nobody. I'm running billion dollar business here. So whatever I tell you, it's the law. I don't care if it's in your contract. So some contracts we have deemed generation clauses and you still have to fight with all these big players, you know, to say, hey, there's a clause in the contract and you owe me money. Sometimes we're lucky, but not always, yeah? And the fourth point is on roof damage. This is the best. Cyclone hits. Force majeure, the roof is massively damaged. Let's say 10 things broke on the roof. Five belong to the solar system. The client comes and says, solar company, go fix all items. We're like, hey, this is not ours. So they try their luck, right? They try their luck and they, they, they check, they, they hope that you fix things for them. So these four items, I, I thought there's a lot of correlation with our with our day-to-day -day business as well. So some uh, good news now, because again, cannot give three negative speeches, so I try to be uh, positive today. Uh, so quickly about Clintech Solar and then some recent numbers, and then I have these topics like India then. So this is one year ago to two years ago when I joined Clintech, what we have done and where we are now. Quickly on this slide is that I, I, I'm one of the 30 engineers, right? So people see developers, they think it's like 59 bankers and businessmen and one engineer. In fact, 50% of all our staff are engineers. So even though we have EPCs and contractors, we have to beat them up quite massively because we need to make sure the quality is there and that they're doing things according to what we want. So uh, yeah, we have the, the big difference here uh, is that we are present in many other countries in Southeast Asia, which increases the challenges. So my engineers, and three of them are here in the room, not only they take care of their assets in India, they are in the same groups as my engineers in other countries. And they know it's a, it's, we're in the same boat. If the boat sinks, everyone will go down together. 
So we might have issues in a site in Cambodia and someone from here might go because the guy from here is the best knowledge center at that particular matter and vice versa. We have engineers that come from the other markets to India. So very important part, you know, this is an engineering piece of equipment. You need engineers uh, in your enterprise to, to hedge the risk. Uh, some uh, fresh numbers for you. Uh, so we're present in six countries and by the end of this year, it'll be eight. Uh, we're signing a few deals in Vietnam and Indonesia portfolio, but India is our bread and butter, 70%. This number has not moved much in the past two years. Uh, 70 megawatts of signed deals, nearly 50 megawatts running. And a major USP for us is there is this push from big MNCs like headquarters in America or headquarters in, in Europe. Just, just tell all their factories in Asia you must solarize because first of all, solar is cheaper. Second of all, we want to be green because everyone is green. So solarize all roofs. And then we have clients that have roofs in, let's say, Vietnam, Singapore and India. So we can we have this ability then to deploy for the same client in multiple geographies and and in some cases the procurement team is is uh, is following the rules of the headquarters so that helps us in secure in securing uh, multi-site deals for india this is our footprint uh, north west and um, and uh, south with hubs here in delhi chennai uh, Pune area, we have a design team in Hyderabad and uh, again 50 sites, very complex, very complex to manage that. I tell people, look it's much easier to manage two 25 megawatt PV plants than to manage 20, 30, 40 rooftops. So the amount of work is, uh, is uh, considerable. And we are also deploying a few ground mounts, but in small scale, uh, also with open access coming up. Some of our logos here, uh, some, I, I realized that some of the clients match with the previous uh, speaker. So yeah, so uh, you know, just look outside your window of your airplane. Every time you're reaching a city, the number of rooftops is massive. So I, I usually, I don't see people as competitors because the number of roofs outweigh the number of available companies. My company can maybe do a hundred projects at once and the other companies, maybe they can do, I don't know, a hundred or 200, doesn't matter. The number of roofs is massive out there. That's why you end up seeing even some of the same logos there because some of these clients, they have 20 roofs in India, 30 roofs. Right? They might not have the ability to, to deploy with the same uh, developer. So uh, these are a few of our uh, big monsters on roofs. Uh, and then you can see you can really put some volume uh, on these big factories. And again, some of these factories are like this Mazak is a Japanese factory. So you have to follow the safety standards, all the paperwork which is driven directly from Japan. So this is a very complex exercise. You might say, ah, in Cambodia I cut corners, but then, you know, the, you cannot cut corners because some of these clients, they have 10 times more engineers than you have. So you go to a meeting, you and another of your engineers, you enter the room, you're, you two are alone there and suddenly 10 engineers come and they bring civil engineer, electrical engineer, all sorts of types of engineers. So this is very complex uh, business model when you're deploying in big MNCs rooftops. Uh, okay, so when I started at CleanTech two plus years ago, uh, so this is what we found. It was panic across the board uh, because the, the performance of the assets dropped. So we started detecting issues in the winter. So it was a combination of soiling and air pollution. And investor is panicking because the, re the returns are not there. So it was a very difficult time because you cannot solve things from night to day, right? Uh, it's a continuous effort. 
So, and we had issues in most of our India sites, whether it was soiling or whether it's power factor. Client says, my power factor moved 0.01, go fix. So it's, a, it's a, sometimes I see my life vanishing before my eyes, but I like what I do, have been in solar for 12 plus years. Uh, so this is first time I came in Delhi, to Delhi two years ago, could not see the sky, and then I'm like, this is really bad. So I had written a paper about haze in Singapore. So we applied the same knowledge to Delhi and found that the losses were around 5% on an annual basis. Uh, then the next point was to make the business development guys, like my colleague here, Anuvarat, is in the room, is because it's like, look, if I'm X kilometers from downtown Delhi, am I out of the blast zone? And I told him it takes time. And of course, he wanted the answer on the spot. So I said, no, give me, give me one year because you have to see the entire seasons play and then you can uh, make a decision. So we have some assets that are 70 to 80 kilometers from downtown. And we have many assets. So that gave us a lot of data to analyze. So we, we wrote the paper about soiling, uh, soiling and haze and that gave a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, traction because I share this with the community. So if you don't have the paper, just come to me. I'll share the PDF with you. Then last year I wrote another paper about gauging the performance of assets in India because the sensors get dirty very fast. So it's useless to use performance ratios. So this paper talks about different ways of gauging the performance. Again, PDF is ready to roll. Just come to me and I'll give you, the, uh, uh, give you a copy. So what type of homework we did? We intensified the cleaning cycles for Delhi during winter. We went from like once a month, no, two times a month, three times a month. Some sites is even four times a month. Uh, cleaning cycles were optimized across the country. Some months you might need zero because it's very rainy and then other months you might need two or three cleaning. So we uh, adjusted those. Training of uh, contractors and diversification because you know cannot have contractor comes and says, I can handle. And then I'm like, no, you can't because it's too many projects for you. So we needed to diversify to, to diminish the, the risk on our side. Our team started with one engineer, Rohit, here in Delhi. And then, you know, he did a lot of this work of rectifying old assets in our portfolio. We call these assets legacy assets. So now these assets are back at a, a, a health level, which is, uh, uh, in line with what the investor wants. And I will request you to Sure. Uh, I think I have one more slide. Uh, optimization of business model, right? Uh, so we know how much we're going to bring. And what's the situation now? Last time I spoke in Delhi, I said, I dare anyone in the audience to find me a system here in Delhi above 1400 kilowatt hour per kilowatt peak per annum. We have one in our portfolio and it's 70 to 80 kilometers from downtown. So now I tell the business guys, you can use 1400 in a business plan if you are 80 kilometers. Now the question is, what if you're at 50, 40, 30? Because I tell you, the pollution is not linear in this city, very complex exercise. But this is good news. Uh, other assets in India improved, and this boosts the investor confidence. A lot of investors were asking me, so why should I put money in India? And we're like, no, 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 relax. It can be done. Just give us some time. And we have demonstrated that. And the legacy sites, yeah, it's not dead, right? You can improve and bring almost back to full health. So thank you for your attention.